Welcome to The Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Caddy. I'm Chris Yee. And today we're taking a look at the newest versions of Unmatched, Hell's Kitchen and Redemption Row. Now. We're talking about these from an aspect of the fact that you may have never played Unmatched before. Mm. Okay, right. So this may be your entry point into this system. Mm -hmm. It already exists. There is, I think, six sets or five or six sets. There's a bunch. A, there's a few, quite that a few. That already boxes. exist, yeah. and this is compatible with the other sets. Sure. Although I don't think any of us has mixed it yet, have we? I have not mixed them, no. no but no. Uh, soon, Luke Cage will have to go up against some Raptors. I would like that to see awesome, that. That sounds awesome, actually. I would love, yes, yeah. Uh, but, so, to that end, Z has already done one video where he's gone over all the details of what's in these boxes. Yeah, There's three little, characters in each one. The flavor of each of the characters, kind of how they behave, what they do, yeah. But if you want to know how the game plays, Z's going to talk about that right now, then we'll come back and tell you what we think. All right. Are you ready? Hit it, guy. Punch it, Chewy. <laughs> The objective of the game is to reduce your opponent's hero's figure down to zero life. We've got over here Daredevil with 17, Luke Cage with 13. Though Luke Cage does have a sidekick, Misty Knight, with 6 health. You'll have a start player who goes on uh, this spot with a 1 right there. If they have any sidekicks that go into the same zone, uh, colored spaces denoting zones. Second player over there, this board happens to have some spots for special tiles that you randomize and put there. And then every player is going to shuffle up their deck of cards and draw five cards. You are ready to begin. Every player has this identity card, which is going to give you a few pieces of information about that character. How much they can move when they move, starting health and so forth. If they are a melee or a ranged fighter, in this case Misty Knight is a ranged fighter. And then again, special ability here in the center. So Luke Cage is going to begin, and on uh, every player's turn, they get two actions. And for each one, they have three choices. You can choose the same one more than once if you want to. So the first one is maneuver. When you maneuver, you are going to first draw a card. You have to do that. And then you may move each of your figures up to your move amount. You cannot move through opposing fighters, and you have to follow these lines on the board in order to move. So, for example, this player could draw a card and then move one, two, one, two. That could be your first action. And then I could do it again as my second action and be done with it. At the end of my turn, I have to check that my hand limit is uh, being obeyed, which is seven or fewer cards. So, max is seven. The other options are you can scheme. You can take a card from your hand that has the lightning symbol denoting a scheme and play that card. So, Luke Cage could do that. This one says Luke Cage is the one playing it. If it said Misty Knight, it would only apply to her. But Luke Cage, the card is called Where's My Money? And it says place Luke Cage adjacent to the nearest opposing fighter. Gain one action. Fine, so Luke Cage is going to go there. Next to our good friend here, Daredevil, who is right there. And Luke Cage, who just showed up, ready to pummel him. There you go. So... Because I just gained an action, I have one more, even though that was my second. And then they could do the other action, which is attack. When you attack, you are going to pick a card from your hand that applies to that character that is either an attack card, like this one, or a versatile card, like this one, which is either an attack or a defense. With this one being only a defense card. You could play that card like so. Now your opponent has a choice to make. They can either defend or not defend. So we'll take a look at Daredevil's hand here, and they are going to choose to defend with this card. Once that's done, we will reveal both, and we are going to check for any abilities. There will be three kinds. They say immediately, that happens as soon as you reveal the cards, during combat, or after combat. If both cards have the same timing window, it's defender first, then attacker. So, uh, there's no immediately. And there's no during combat. During combat, we're going to compare this value to this value right here. So the attack is for 5, the defense is 3. So that means Daredevil is going to take the difference in hits for 2 hits. And then after combat happens, this one says after combat, move Daredevil up to 2 spaces. So Daredevil could move, say, 1, 2. 
and then this card is done. And then this one says, after combat, draw a card. So Luke Cage could draw a card, and that's done. And this player is now done. It'll be Daredevil's turn to take their, uh, their actions. So they might maneuver themselves. They might play a scheme. They might attack, right? They maybe will attack with this one as their first action. Luke Cage is going to play this one to defend. They'll play that. And then both players reveal that. This one says immediately cancel all effects on your opponent's card. So all these effects are going to be canceled. Then we go to during combat. This one has a during combat, but we're ignoring it. Four, two, but then we do need to check Luke Cage's special ability. Luke Cage happens to say that he takes two less combat damage from attacks. When defending, Luke Cage wins combat if he takes no damage, even if he didn't play a card. So right now this is four, this is two plus that two, so that's four, which means no damage at all. And then um, this one says, after combat, if you won the combat, end the turn. And they are, they are considered to have won. So they just cut Daredevil's turn short, which means it is now immediately back to Luke Cage's turn. Now, Daredevil has a special ability, too, of course. Um, uh, Daredevil says, during combat, if you have two or fewer cards in your hand, you may blind boost your attack or defense. So what that means is, assuming Daredevil's turn hadn't ended, they could play this card to attack. And then when that card gets revealed, blind boost. Draw a card, reveal it, look at the boost value right here, and add that to the total of the attack. You can also, by the way, when you maneuver, when you are moving around the board, you can discard a card from your hand for its boost value to move that much farther with each of your figures. And then on this board specifically... You've got these spots, like I said. If you end up in this spot here and you're attacking or defending from it, you could choose to use this, which is a versatile attack or a plus plus attack, and you would get plus two to whatever you are playing. These all behave the same way, plus one, plus two, plus one. And then the other ones will behave just like schemes in your hand, allowing you to, to take the special ability there for one of your actions. This one lets you deal damage to every fighter in your zone. This one lets you look at an opponent's hand and then draw a card. This one lets you discard your entire hand and then draw three, which might be better than what you're holding now. There's also ranged attacks and zones. The zones are the color-coded areas. A ranged attack allows you to attack an opponent in the same zone as you are, so Misty Knight from this area here, which shares these two colors, could attack Daredevil in this spot because one of the zones, this greenish area, is being shared between them. So from here she could attack Daredevil, of course using a card that allows her to do so that says Misty Knight, like this one, and is an attack, like that. So there you go. Uh, again, you continue taking turns until somebody is down to zero on their main dial. And at that point, your opponent has won, and you have been eliminated. All right, now we've talked about these in the, I mean, we talked about um, Unmatched in the past, and then lately you've been reviewing most of the sets. Mm -hmm. But this is Marvel, so I'm back in. Ooh. Um, although the set I was most excited about is the set that's not out yet. The mm. Squirrel Girl, Squirrel Girl. Ms. Marvel. Teen, uh, what is it called? Uh, teen the Spirit. Teen, the teen Angst. Spirit. Yeah. Oh. Teen Spirit. <laughs> yeah. has Squirrel Girl has Cloak and Dagger. Oh, yeah. And Kurt Ms. Cobain. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be awesome, <laughs> no. too. That being said, That's I like this. I like the fact that they picked lower-powered superheroes. So you're not playing, um, you know, Iron Man and the same old people we always see. You're playing that. You mean lesser known people? No, I specifically said lower powered people. You think Ghost Rider is a low powered character? Ghost Rider um, slides all over the place in, on the Marvel cosmic scale. Because you put oil on the road. There you go. Hey, oh. Yeah, no, I. I okay. I, I, think I, I think I know what you mean. No, I know what I mean. I mean, they're lower powered. They're not the A listers. That is true. They can't go up against Iron, Iron Man Quip to 4 with any one of these six people. Mm. Because it's hat. I know my comics. So yeah, okay. about the game. Right, These are right. lower power characters. Question for you, yeah? Luke Cage versus Raptors. Who wins that? 
Oh, Luke Cage, of course. <laughs> okay, there we go. See? C level. Anyhow. Clever Christmas. Oh, wait, sorry. All right, so general thoughts on the system uh, with Marvel characters. What do you all think of it? I think it's, I think it's good, right? It's a good fit. Yeah. yeah, it's a good fit for this theme. Uh, it's a good game. I'm not a huge into the unmatched system because of the, the of the genre of game it is, right? It's often just kind of like a little dueling game. Mm -hmm. Play cards, attack, defend, have quirky little effects. Those are fine. Those are fun. This is one that I think is really clean, and the Marvel theme did capture me, actually. Mm -hmm. this These sets made me say, okay, I want to try this again. Uh, even though there's a lot of Marvel games, I feel like, good. This is the right kind of game to slap a Marvel theme onto because the decks feel unique and characteristic. This is kind of a no-brainer for me. I mean, I love Unmatched. That's what I I'm love, thinking. Yeah. I love Marvel, so obviously this is going to be pretty big. But the interesting thing is there are a lot of other Marvel like miniatures slash skirmish games, but a lot of those are more like you control a team. I played a ton of Heroclix growing up, and this ended up feeling a lot more like Heroclix to me just because... Um, all that stuff, but this is going to be a lot more accessible than a game like Heroclix because Heroclix has massive amounts of powers and there's dice chucking in Heroclix that this has the deterministic card combat trying to outsmart your opponent sort of thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I think, like you said, it's a perfect match. I, it's clean, it's streamlined, mm -hmm. it plays relatively quickly. I love that these are characters that are recognizable, not that the mm -hmm. other ones aren't, but, you know, a character from a movie or a TV or, you know, like one one sort of place I can associate with them like the invisible man mm -hmm. is from the novel that's it really you know these characters have so much history so many issues so many comic books right that that's fun they're immediately relatable and the fact that they're able to put their flavor their thing in a deck of 30 cards or so that's impressive and it really mm -hmm. you can feel like that character while you play I really like that I think they did a good job matching these characters' decks with how that character acts. Oh, for yeah. sure. I disagree. They're unmatched. Continue. You're not coming to these reviews no more. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I think they did a good job on that because, again, this is something I, I read these guys. I, I know their mm -hmm. lore. Well, actually, Moon Knight, I'm, I haven't read a ton of him, but, you know, from what I know from them, I think the decks match. I thought Bullseye, his deck was on point. His special power worked with him. Mm -hmm. The fact that Daredevil gets stronger the weaker he gets works really well because that happens in the comics all the time. Right. You mm -hmm. know, where he's down and he's on that last thing and then comes back. He's, you know... The underdog, yeah. The underdog. Yeah. Which of these sets did you like better? Hands down, the Redemption Row set. I like the characters more. I have more... Kind of what you're saying. I have more basis of knowledge about who they are and what kind of characteristics they are. I like, I think Ghost Rider is probably my favorite of the characters. Mm. The way that he flips over his little Hellfire tokens, it's kind of a fun little resource to manage. He can slide around the board, deal little damage here and there, move fast. I like everything about Less about fun to play against, just as a side note. I, I definitely yeah. like both of them, but I definitely think I still like Redemption Row better also. I mean, I think Luke Cage is mine out of all of these, just because he's super tanky and like hits really hard. He's very straightforward, but I really enjoyed his stuff as well. He wants to win those combats, and he yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, I, if again, if I have to pick one, I also like the Redemption one row a little bit better. Having both lets you mix. Yes. That's important. So you have both boards. You have the tokens that For you both. can shuffle them together and then just set out the tokens that came in both. But these characters, in for me, at least in my head, stand out from each other a little more. Right. Whereas over here, I associate Elektra and uh, Daredevil right. already. And Bullseye. And Bullseye a bit. They could have picked any of the number of bad guys, but I associate those three. These three, I don't associate. Oh, they almost have no matching. Yeah, and so, right. so this feels a little more fun, like a little wilder of a set. Right. That's the word I would use, wilder, wackier. You know? Yeah. I like this set better. Okay. But yeah. that's because Daredevil is, of all, I think he's my favorite unmatched character I've ever played. Okay. Oh, I've not okay. played them all, but man, I like the fact he's a smaller deck, and you take that chance of losing those cards that could win you right. with his extra thing. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's you a, lose it's on the edge. Risk. That's the thing, I right? Like it's that. about being on the edge, yeah. I really enjoy what the tokens bring to the game because this is new to the Marvel and matches, the tokens that you have on the board. And some of it's just as simple as if you end your turn on this space, you can use it for attack or defense. And you can figure out how to like utilize those tokens. I'm always looking at the board being like, okay, should I stop there on that power? Oh, they're too far away from it right now. Or maybe I can get the map and like attack across the whole board. Yeah. Or my hand's low. Maybe I should go here and get this thing to recycle some cards out. There's all sorts of interesting stuff that comes in. I'm going to be excited to see as they add more and more of those with the different Marvel sets. Well, it feels yeah. great. It's very superhero -y to be like, you're going to throw a punch my way? I grab a mailbox to defend myself. Right. That's awesome. It just yeah. adds a little bit more flair to what I think it's is a, a confident nice, good system. It's a nice thing. It's in a lot of these superhero games right. or whatever, the stuff on the ground. It's and ridiculously it, simple. It easily translates to the other ones. Where do you put yeah. these on the... The scale of the other ones. Do you like this better than regular unmatched? Because I, I do. But I when mean, you say regular unmatched, what well, do you mean? You know what, you I, know what I mean? I mean, uh, non-buffy. <laughs> no, but I mean, do you like? Do you, does the Marvel thing make you like it more, or is it basically just yet another cool IP in this unit in this system? I don't think it makes me like the system more because I really like the system. I can see some people being swayed by the Marvel characters when perhaps before they were like. A little Red Riding Hood and the and Beowulf. Who cares, you know? Sure. And now being into it because mm. of that. The system's the same, though. So no, I don't think. And in fact, this is not my favorite set that they've ever come out with. Assuming I combine these yeah, in my head. Yeah, Right. Um. So no, that doesn't. I like that I recognize these people, and I think some of these characters are supremely fun. Mm -hmm. But this doesn't make it better for me. I think it might for you, though. For me, it does. Yeah. Well, I'll start there then with the, the final thoughts. For me, I like it a lot. Um, it still feels a little loose to me. At times. I don't know how to explain it. Like, when you're on the ropes in this game a few times, I feel like, well, I guess I'm done. I felt that way when I was playing Ghost Rider. There was okay. a certain point where I was like, oh, I've lost, but I still got to finish the game. I know you can come back and everything, um, but I still like it. I miss the dice. I know that's a weird thing, like, in this kind of game. The card play is fun. I just don't love it as much as the rest of you, but I still think it's a, a very fun, good system. Yeah. I give it an eight. It's very solid. I'll play it a lot, but I there's a, a small lack of excitement that I that that keeps it from going higher for me. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I'll go next. Um, my overall score for these sets is a seven point five, and that's a bump up from what I would give the other unmatched sets because it, it sounds shallow, right? But I like this theme. And I also like the little additions, the tokens on the board, and some of the, you know, like like Ghost Rider's Hellfire resource tokens. I am a very much a Euro gamer. I like that resource management stuff that's in some of these characters. The theme does it for me. It really does. And so, uh, if I were to play any of the unmatched sets, even though uh, Sinbad or Beowulf or any of these other characters might have cooler decks and and really are strategically better or something. This is what I want to play. Mm. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so for me, I mean, obviously, I love Unmatched and I love Marvel. So this is going to get a 9 for me. I mean, I'm going to get these sets. These are going to be added to my collection. I've been playing Unmatched a ton with my girlfriend, so I've been having a blast playing this. And this is Unmatched is also always one of those games that when I'm at a Dice Tower retreat or Dice Tower convention, if somebody wants to play a two-player game, I pull Unmatched off the shelf because it's like quick playing and it's really easy to teach. So as more and more Marvel sets come out, I'm going to continue to get these. I think these are great and a lot of fun. And if you're into that quick skirmish game that you have to kind of outthink your opponent a little bit, Unmatched is a blast. I'm giving it the same as you, actually. I'm also giving it a 9. Um, my highest rated set is still Cobble and Fog. Mm. I gave that one a 10. I think that set is thematically cohesive and gorgeous, and every character is so interesting in that. I think this, I almost isolate in my head. I'll mm. mix them up. You know, I'll play around with that. But this is like Marvel's Unmatched, you know what I mean? Yeah. And as more sets come out, that'll be great. More tokens, like you said, more mm -hmm. characters, that'll be fantastic. This is some of the strongest stuff they've done. They've done right. a lot of sets. They're, uh, the things they're adding to the boards, and they've, they've done iterations on the boards for a while now. They're interesting. They are down to putting a single board in these now. They've been mm. doing that for a while, simply because I think they're running out of things that they can innovate just on the board. The one thing that's in these is clean and neat and innovative. It's simple, but it's it's nice. Um, so I really enjoy it. I, I'm looking forward to more. I'm going to keep on playing these, like you're saying. Yeah, this is good stuff.
Nine out of ten. Well, there you go. If you like Unmatched, you're gonna like this. If you like Marvel, you're probably gonna like it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, they do yeah. justice to the. And if you if you like thing. both, you know you're getting this. I would assume. You already have it in your hands while you're watching. I can't videos. wait for more exciting characters to come out. Yeah, I'm sure more. Well, we know three more are coming. I bet more are beyond that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, there you go. That's the Marvel Unmatched stuff. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Roy Canning. I'm Chris Yee. Have fun in Hell's Kitchen. That sounds terrible. <laughs>